Gemini, welcome to your Celtic Cross reading. I hope you're well. I hope you are fabulous. First, we're going to pull for you a general overview card, and then we will build your baseline. What is going on, please, for that Gemini energy? Show me, Gemini, please. What is going on for Gemini? Show me, Gemini, please. What's going on for the Gemini Collective? This, I believe, is the, I don't know, Psychic Tarot Oracle, I believe. <laughs> it's like saying the same thing twice. Psychic Tarot Oracle. It's like, pick a lane. <laughs> but it is a good deck. Okay, number 17, hope. Beautiful. Having hope. I hope it's reasonable hope. Hope should always be a good thing and not take into a bad space. I hate it when people have unreasonable hope because it hurts. But I want you, if you are indeed hopeful within yourself, outside of you, situation or person. I want it to be good hope, useful hope. The 17th of any given month might be important to you. 17 for some of you might be a significant number. 17 reduces to eight. Uh, so for some of you, Leo energy, you might have some strong Leo in your chart, could be connecting to one, that's not the point. I hope, hopefully it's significant hope. One that you can hold in your hands and expect to be yours. It's beautiful. Let's build your baseline, yeah? I'm always cautious with hope. I don't like giving people false hope, and I don't want people to induce false hope within themselves. If you must hope, be it reasonable. Let it be reasonable. Okay? With warranted expectations. I hope so. What's going on, please? Show me what I need to see, please, for that Gemini energy. Show me that Gemini energy, please. What are we hoping for? What are we hoping for? Show me, Gemini, please. Show me, Gemini, please. Mm -hmm. What's going on for Gemini, please? Take what resonates, save it does not. Reverse energies as it applies. Cross watchers, same. What's going on, please, for Gemini? Starting position, the star, beautiful. Hopes, dreams. Oh, but large ones. Desire. To wish upon a star, yeah? The star is no insignificant thing. It takes a lot of work to be guided by the star. No easy thing at all. It's much easier to live under the sun. Which they say is the happiest card in tarot, and I don't dispute that. But that doesn't mean it's the most flavorful. I find the star to be a lot more flavorful because it's personal. It takes a lot of nerve and ingenuity to walk the light of your particular pathway. As we know, the constellations shift. So that means it takes work to keep an eye on it. Many of you are in positions of pursuing your star, whatever that means to you. And it's personal. And there's desire and hope wrapped into it. Challenges. Eight of crystals. Getting out of your head about it. Overthinking the process. Perhaps there's things that you cannot see or you just don't want to see. I don't know. Let's take a look. Hovering influences the world. Everybody and their mother's getting this one. Every, and a couple of folks have gotten this card in that position. That which we can't always see. But it can kind of feel like it's happening. Cycles, things closing, things opening. One cannot be had without the other. Right? When the door closes, maybe a window opens. Cycling. Now's the time, by the way. As we get closer and closer to Scorpio season, so I can't say I'm surprised to see so much world and transformative energy for folks. It was Virgo, and I want to say it was Aries, I believe, who had that same card in that same position. I promise you there's been many a shuffle between you and them. Relevant past, strength, again, more of that possible Leo energy here. You know what it is to be strong. You know that feeling of resilience, leadership, tenacity, strength of will, fortitude. You know all that. You know what that is. You know what that's like. You will need that, I'm sure. If you are pursuing your star, your de deepest hopes and desires, you're going to need strength. So I know you know what that feeling is like. What is exiting the four crystals? The time of rest is ending. Mm -hmm. Activity. Four swords, the time of rest is exiting. Some of your energies are going to get busy. Hmm. Yes, but the time of thinking is over. 
Four Swords isn't just resting, it's still the mental process, which I know you're familiar with. Thinking, reflection, introspection, quiet, quiet energy, exiting. Things might start to get a little busy, a little loud. Your near future, Nine of Wands, mm-hmm. You're going to go through what looks like an energy spike relatively soon, busyness, okay? There's something here that it was quiet and now it's not quiet. Something shifting. It could be rapidly too. It's going to require a lot of your energy, so it's a good thing that you are familiar then with strength. Doing what it is you need to do to get through and to pull through. But if it is indeed important to you, as the star would indicate, you're going to have to expect frustrations, right? It's not such an easy thing, as we said. I think I was telling Scorpio the other day, you know, if you're busting this much ass for your Ten of Pentacles and to run your empire, you're going to have night sweats because, yeah, I saw the frustration and the stress. But it was frustration and stress well earned. I just know that you're coming out of a period of quiet and that you will soon enter a cycle of busyness, possibly to the point of exhaustion. We'll see. And like I said, if you are indeed abiding by your star, it might be a sacrifice you're willing to make. Okay. Getting out of your ease. Because what you have in mind is the sun. As we've been discussing, your happiness in the general sense. So you're achieving a goal, and it's going to require your energy, a lot of it. But again, if uh, you're not sweating, then you ain't working. There's something here that's important to you. And it might just go very much beyond love. Could be a situation, circumstance, work, I don't know. But the point is, it's part of your strengths, so you assume to adopt the responsibility of it. Your environment, two of cups, love, support from someone. Good, beautiful. Wheel of fortune, hopes and fears, are things changing? Yes, they are. But are they changing in the right direction? Again, if we're going to show that much output, that much work, that much frustration, we want to know that we're going to have the payout that we desire. So you are indeed being very active, very proactive. There is something in your energy that says it's coming out of rest. No more passivity. It's time to do the damn thing, right? And uh, hopes and fears being what they are, it's a dual thing. What we hope for the most is sometimes what we fear the most. By all means, Gemini is saying, yes, change. Just please, dear God, let it be the right change. I want to know that I'm working towards this for a reason. I want to know I'm busting my ass for this for a reason. I want to know I'm putting all this time, energy, and effort into this thing for a reason. Dear God, please let that wheel of fortune turn in my favor. The outcome, justice, balance, equilibrium. Yes, very good. Good. You have some sort of support system with you that does look love oriented, uh, possibly significant other some excuse me significant other some types of relationship that seems to be supporting your efforts here, whatever those are, to you. Sorry, <laughs> I just had a notification hit that caught my eye right there. Sorry. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and start off with the star here. Yes, justice, balance. In the greater scheme of things, Gemini, I don't know what it is you're working so hard and you are working so very hard towards something. And it does require, it looks like, to some extent, your blood, sweat, and tears. But, and this is one of the reasons why I read tarot, is to point out to people that they, in fact, have choice. Tarot is not the absence of choice. Tarot is the personification of choice. You're choosing this particular level of blood, sweat, and tears because it means something to you. So I don't know what it is that you were busting so much ass for, but congratulations to you. You're making things happen. Where are we? So for those of you who value your 10 minute message, here's your 10 minute message. And if that's enough for you, you're not interested in the whole hour read, which is what I am well known for, <laughs> I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Here's your 10 minute baseline. There's something here that's important to you. You've rested on it long enough. The time of inactivity is over. The time of rest and contemplation is over. Time to get busy. You have the strength and fortitude to pull this off. You have to trust that. I know you have experience with it. There are things that will be shifting outwards as you go somewhere else. Cycling out. What that is, I do not know. But your strengths seem to say it's worth it. My star is here. The potentiality of my son is here. It's worth it to me, Christina. I believe you. 
you have a support system in here with you, some sort of two of cups, some sort of relationship energy. Wheel of Fortune. Yes, you want things to change. You are being an active agent as opposed to a passive agent. And I talk to people about this all the time. Wishing and wanting means nothing to me. You can wish upon a star and it may not add up to dick if you don't do anything about it. <laughs> You'll think if I just want hard enough, want hard enough. They think they know what the magician means. They don't know what the magician means. You just sit there and you want and you desire. That's just being a greedy little devil goblin because you're not doing anything to tell the universe that you're taking this seriously. So yes, you are being very much an active, not passive agent of change. And for this, I applaud you. you may continue on in this goal because your outcome looks like everything is justified. Okay? Yes. Wanting, wishing upon a star is easy. Oh, dear universe, why can't you just make this easy and let over this thing has fallen to my lap without me having to do any work? Thank you, I appreciate you. That's not how life works. And the Gemini that I'm looking at today knows this. So whatever that star is to you, I will clarify it, but honestly, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to you as an individual, whatever that star is to you. But you understand that whatever that is, is part of your happiness. You're happy ever after. You seem to have the support of someone with you, which is good. Show me the star, please. Show me the star, please. Show me the star, please. Show me the star, please, for Gemini. I like your reading already, how it's shaping up. Will I see some nonsense and bullshit and lingering and all this back and forth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real tarot is real life. Queen of Wands, the energy. Queen of Swords, honey, you packing some personality to... Oh! Hell yes! You packing some personality today, baby! Hell yes! Go, Gemini, go. Bye, I'll see you in a couple weeks. You busy. <laughs> Done. It's over. I don't care what I see from this point. You've already made up your mind, and I fucking love it. I told you. I applaud you, baby. Go. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye. You're good. Keep on keeping on. Whatever it is, honey, just go. 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 Go, go be the Gemini you need to be. Go. It's it you. I'm looking at a heavily goal-oriented Gemini today, and I don't know that it's necessarily to do with love. It's more about your life path accomplishments. That's the benefit of the Celtic cross. Is that it's it, I can see many things. It's not just love. Uh, is the love component show up? Yeah, absolutely. We put our emotions into things, people, places, situations. Of course, I'm going to see love. But this is overarching life path stuff. Okay, this is big picture concept Gemini stuff I'm looking at today. I see a love component in here in terms of relationship value that supports you, that harmonizes with you, and shares the goals. So in this deck, which I do believe is the Dreamy Moons Tarot, I love it very, very much. It's like I support you, you support me. That's the way the two cups should be. So I know that you're emotionally being replenished by someone. And that's in your environment, and that's beautiful. Very supportive environment that you have. So I know that part of you is taken care of, and it's part of the reason that you have love with you, that surrounds you from someone. You have the strength of will in the past to tell me, Christina, it's for all these components that I am supported, and I am strong-willed that I'm doing this thing. Whatever that is to you. Okay? And let me tell you why I'm so impressed. You packing some heat today, honey. Look at that. Mm. Queen of Wands, Queen of Swords, the Wheel of Fortune. This is active. It is not passive. I told you. The time of rest is over. It's time to get out there, start kicking ass and taking names. That's the Gemini I'm looking at. I don't know what's got you so ramped up, but I know it means the world to you. So much so that you have decided to become an active agent in your own interest. That Wheel of Fortune is here, not once but twice, over here in your hopes and fears. I don't know if things will turn out in my favor, but by God, I'm going to try. Don't get in the way. Look at that. Like, I've made up my mind. You have. You've made up your mind, and you've got the energy with the Queen of Wands to back it up. Hell yes. So I don't really care what I see from this point forward. Everything else is details at this point. And I mean that. And honey, I take details seriously. <laughs> Triple Scorpio. <laughs> we like details. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to stop at this point. I don't care what I see. The wit Trepidation, fears, not everything is noble. Is it going to require a lot of your work? Uh-huh. But let me tell you something, honey. Goals at this level, if you're not working that hard, then you're not doing it right. That means it doesn't mean shit to you. 
if you're not putting that much labor and intensity in whatever this is, then it's not the star. Sorry. If the star isn't frustrating you, if it's easy, then it's not a star. The stars are never easy, but it's that much more rewarding. And that's why, as a pain in the ass as the stars might be, I'll tell you what, it's a hell of a lot more satisfying than the sun. Anyway, there's a little pep talk. Not that you need it. <laughs> Jim and I'm looking at it. You don't have time to watch this anyway. Bye. <laughs> the Eight of Swords is crossing in the challenge. Hopefully, whatever it is that was not clear to you is on its way out and it's no longer an oppositional energy. I want to see that too. That would be fabulous. Some of the Eight of Swords, please. Or it might be, again, your concession. I may not know or see everything, but that's not enough to stop me. Hell yeah. Some of the Eight of Swords, please, show me. As soon as I saw that Four of Swords on the exit, my first thought, Demma is about to get busy. Yes, you is. And there's a reason why you have strength in the relevant past, honey. You're going to need it. Because you about to get busy. Do you believe me yet? Ten of Wands in the star? As I often say in career, if you're going to have a Ten of Wands, be it the Ten of Wands of your choice. Labor of love. Labor of hopes and dreams. Show me that Eight of Swords, please. Ace of Wands. Dude, seriously. Seven of Swords, the doubts, the secrets, justice. Okay, so there's the admission in you. This is one of the things you are concerned about. I do believe you have reasonable concerns, but it's, again, not enough to deter you. I just see you going. You're, you're doing it. You are pursuing this. There's the admission in you. I don't know that I'm right. I don't know that I'll be justified in the end. It's looking like you will be. One of the things that's on your mind, but you're keeping to yourself. The Seven of Swords is an internal process, although I would ask you to possibly get this out of your head. Now, I know you, okay? Sometimes you can be very, very, very internal until you have your stuff worked out, so maybe open up to the people you can trust about what it is you're thinking. I don't know if I'm crazy. I don't know if what I'm trying to do is justify, but I know it feels right, okay? Uh, your justice is the outcome. I know it feels right here with the Ace of Wands. You're pursuing something. I don't think you're pursuing someone. I think you're pursuing something. You have the support of someone with you already. That's what I'm saying. So you have heavy concepts here of, I don't know if I'll be justified in the end. It's kind of internal to you. I'd like you to air out those doubts, okay? That way maybe perhaps you can get some valuable insight from someone. Uh, and they could literally be Libra. It does not have to be. Um, there is heavy Libra energy here. And Leo, as we've said. But yes, anyway, my point is, is that the Eight of Wands is in your challenge position. Eight of Wands, I'm um, sorry so excited for you. I'm not concentrating on what the hell I'm saying. The Eight of Swords is in your challenge position. And then you also have what looks like reasonable doubts here about the justification of whatever it is you're trying to pursue with that Ace of Wands. I just know you're psyched up for it. You've told me twice that you have the energy for it. You want to spend the energy too. So if you're going to put in the night sweats and the blood and tears that go along with it, you're telling me you're willing. Okay? You don't know if it's going to work out. But by God, you want to try. Um, I don't know what that is to you. You you tell me as you see fit. What is it that you are so amped up about and that you have logically concluded with a strong sense of passion behind it that you gotta do it? It's like it that's what it is. That's what I'm trying to say, honey. I'm sorry. I gotta take my shot. That's what you're telling me. I gotta take my shot. You're level headed, you're intelligent, you've got the fire behind you. There's, it, it's been on your mind for a while, too, with that Seven of Swords. You just didn't know if you could justify it or if that it would balance itself out. But you're like, I, that can't deter me. Because if that deters me, I'm just getting in my own way. I'll never know. Right? Jim was like, I gotta shoot my shot. I gotta do it. So you tell me. It's, it is kind of a blanket, vague thing, which you know I don't like. I prefer specificity. Um, but it's applying to so many of you. So whatever that goal is to you, you let me know as you feel fit, okay? What is influencing you? Unseen influence is cycling here. The world, again, this is a good time for it. You know, some of you are going to be exiting out of things so you can pursue whatever the hell this is, okay? 
I don't know. You got to do what you got to do, honey. The world, please. Show me the world, please. Show me the world, please. Show me the world, please. You set this thing in motion, whatever it is, and you are generating change. Like I said, it's terribly active. And it's been with you for a while. You didn't know if you could do it. You didn't know if you could pull it off. Some of you will be going back to school. That's what I'm hearing. You will be going back to school, some of you. Yes. And for some of you, that's specifically in-law. Um, for others of you, we'll be taping, taking up new positions and new fields altogether. But it's something where you can actively use your mind a lot more. There's something about your mental expression that keeps coming up over and over again. I need to be able to express my thoughts more. I need to be able to express my thoughts more. Okay. And, you know, for Gemini, honey, I can't say I'm surprised. Your thoughts are so terribly precious to you. Um, the versatility of your mind being what it is, you can handle the complexity of multiple strains of thought at one time. So I can't say I'm surprised. So some of you, where you're coming from, it's like your mind is being underutilized and you really want to push it further. So like I said, I just have this heavy notes of you going back to school or possibly taking up a teaching position, going into law, something that allows you to really express your blessed mental gifts. You know what I mean? Um, that's here over and over again, and it's been with you for a while. Really, I gotta, I gotta shoot my shot. Okay, the world, Queen of Pentacles, the Nine of Swords, the Two of Cups. Mm. Over here in the environment as well. There has been some expressive concern between you and whoever it is that you are tied to, because there is someone here about the comfort of this thing, the viability, will it be sustaining? That's the question. Perhaps you did not know or anticipate if your person will be supportive. They are showing up in your environment and they are above you as well. It's looking like we've had some conversations here about the stress of the thing. We're afraid, possibly, of things changing financially. Okay, so I'm seeing what looks like a discussion here about Comfort zone, expectations, monetary expectations, the stress of it. This might change things. You're telling your person. They might be talking that to you. Gemini, I support what you do, but this might change things. Okay? It's going to require work here and not work over here. It's going to require that you do more of this and less of that. So I'm seeing a shifting of what looks like potentially responsibilities, getting out of our comfort zones. This is one of the things that concerns you or your partner or the both of you. And I see you two trying to resolve about the give and take. What's going to change, what's not going to change, what the goals are, what the goals are not. Trying to assuage your person's fears, okay? Uh, something like that. It's it's really looks like a discussion about expectations and how things are shifting. Uh, and it's not unknown, I do believe, to the person here who is showing you some sort of support. I'm going to stop real quick. What is this Nine of Swords, please? What is the, where does the Nine of Swords come from? Honey, you know I'm into a reading when I'm clarifying clarifiers. Oh my. Some of that Nine of Swords, please. Things are sifting. We are trying to shift focus. We are, but there is what looks like concern and or conflict regarding output of the energy. What will change, what it will not change. Queen of Swords, there you are again. The Emperor standing in your power. The Three of Pentacles is like, I gotta start somewhere. I gotta start somewhere. I gotta start somewhere, you're saying. I gotta start somewhere. I'm looking to you for cooperation. I'm looking for cooperation, okay? It is kind of a building block structure, but you're standing in your power saying, I've got to start somewhere. So the Three of Pentacles is the first time we see tangible, buildable structure in tarot. It, the idea is we start here and it can move into other areas. And that's what you're telling me, I've got to start somewhere. And with the Emperor here, with the Queen of Swords, your energy is here again. I uh, could be connecting to Aries, Leo, I've said all that already. Uh, Three of Pentacles, I've got to start somewhere. I'm standing in my power, I've got to. We have reasonable concerns here, what looks like monetary concerns, about how things will shift. Will they improve? Will they get worse? What can we expect if we shift in this way? So I'm seeing a little bit of back and forth between you and your person. You're kind of sticking to your guns, but not in a mean way. You're presenting it through a point of view of intelligence. 
this is what you know to be true, I got this, I have to do this, I gotta take my shot. Things are changing and I think this is what we can expect and this is what we cannot expect. So there is some frustration here regarding the stability and or coin input versus output. Uh, but I just see it as a discussion between those elements that may or may not change. It's still looking like supportive at this time, but it's also looking like reasonable expectations of cycling. The idea is I gotta start somewhere. So I'm gonna exit one thing or reduce, mm, that's what it is, reduction, energy reduction, that's what it is, energy reduction. It's partial, it's partial energy reduction. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, honey, it takes me a minute, but I get there eventually. Partial energy reduction, not in the relationship, but in expectations regarding responsibility. At, so we haven't completely cycled out of something else. You're going to reduce your energy towards one thing and increase your energy towards something else. Oh, so it's not full cycle. It's partial. You're reducing your role. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. That takes me a minute. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> I still, despite the world being here, I still see you connecting with the person you associate with comfort, care, comfort, care, comfort, care. And there is a back and forth reasonable discussion regarding monetary output. And you're kind of saying, I got to start somewhere. I will not completely, that's what it is. I, I will not completely stop this thing, but I'm going to reduce my energy towards it so I can do this other thing. Bingo, bango. This would be a good one for career. Crosswatchers, I'm sorry if you're terribly, terribly disappointed if you met a Gemini at the bar a week ago and you want to know if it's going somewhere. That's not this reading. <laughs> real person, real life, real tarot over here. Uh, I'm seeing something here that's a little more complex. You know, it's like, I just met them last week. I need to know if they're going to fall in love with me, Christina. I don't know. Try seeing them and figure it out yourself. It's the old-fashioned way. You don't got to check in with the tarot lady to figure out if it's going to go somewhere. Try living it first. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm serious. Jim and I know. I know you know, but serious. It's ridiculous sometimes. God, people have odd expectations about what tarot is and what it isn't. I'll tell you that right now. Um, okay, here we go. So anyway, reverse energies as applies. And I'm saying that because I am seeing what looks like a support system attached to the decision making here. So you're going to have to figure out who is who in terms of this energetic contemplation. But it does look reasonable. It looks manageable. It is looking like an energy shift from a reduction in one thing, but not a complete loss as we adopt something else. And you're like, I got I to gotta shoot my shot. So that's either you, your person, or a combination of the two of you. Okay. Relevant past. Strength on you. going to need it. Mm-hmm. Shit about to get busy. Okay, so <laughs> strength is in the relevant past. But you know, honey, I equate very strong, and it's a rough analogy, but I think it works, right? Most people get it. That if you're gonna choose your career, if you're gonna choose a relationship, equate it to what it's like to live in a major city. I'm talking a packed city, metropolitan, okay. All major cities have pros and cons, particularly traffic. They all have that in common. Okay, when you live in a big city, traffic. As in career, as in love, as in life, you gotta pick your traffic, honey. So, if you really like Dallas and Houston, which traffic pisses you off the least? And then you can figure out which city you wanna live in. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like picking and choosing your battle. If you're going to be stuck in a lane, which city can you see yourself being stuck in traffic in on a regular basis? That's what I'm saying. When you take on the pros, you have to take on the cons. That's what it is to really love your job or really love someone else. You don't just want the best of that. You also have to accept the flaws. Okay. So that's, that's the kind of the, 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 the energy I'm seeing here, it's like, I know this might be problematic. I know this might be a pain in the ass, but it's my choice. It's my star. I got to try it. I got to try it, right? Strength. I know, you, I know you know what it is to have a strong sense of will and resolution. Okay. Well, you're doing something, honey. Strength and the relevant past, please. Show me. That two of pentacles. 
Knight of Wands. Okay, Four of Wands. Everything, a lot of what your energy has, and this is lovely. This is very nice. Okay. A lot of your strength, excuse me, a lot of your strength has come from your relationship energy, and it's one of the things that has always kind of propelled you forward. Um, I have the relationship energy here, Four of Wands, the Knight of Wands, but also the Two of Pentacles. So a big part of your strength is knowing that even when it's been confusing and the energy isn't always straightforward in your relationship, whoever this is to you, you have always found strength and resolve in it. While the energy for it might not always be consistent and the passion's not where you want it to be sometimes, you still show a certain strength and level of conviction in your relationship. And that's interesting. I wonder why that's coming up. I wonder why that's coming up. How interesting. It's kind of like You've always found strength in this relationship, even if the fire is not where you want it, even if the passion's not where you want it, if the intensity isn't where you want it. You want, is that what it is? I see. I see. It's like you can't find all your energy in just one thing, right? And I agree, that's actually quite reasonable. You can't always look at your relationship for your energy supply and I, completely 100% agree with you and that's why so many people watch tarot is because it's like they feel something's missing and they often look at their person rightly or wrongly to fulfill all their expectations for well for energy use to get from it to give to it and this is where we can create really miserable creatures within ourselves is that when we're constantly looking at our person to supply our personal fuel and um, that's just not always the case. I think, I'm looking at a Gemini, you have a surplus of fuel that you no longer feel is generated from your relationship or that your relationship isn't the only motivation. And I'm, not, I'm saying this not to be rude or disparaging, but it's because I agree. You still have, as an individual entity, a person, a certain supply of energy that has nothing to do with your relationship. And I'm talking from that from experience, honey. This is just this is just common knowledge. You can't get everything from your relationship. If you don't have something outside of it, you're gonna burn out and become disillusioned and disappointed when you're constantly looking at your person for the energy that isn't always there and sustaining. You still have a responsibility as yourself to yourself to be fulfilling as an individual. To to look to or excuse me, look toward your own self fulfillment as an individual. Otherwise, what do you bring into a relationship? It's like, have you ever met? You know what I'm talking about. You met those couples where that other person's always looking at the other person to give them a clue about what to think and feel and all. And don't you just feel sad for them? Because you, it's it's just like, dude, do you not know how to exist outside your relationship, man? Have you met people like that? I've met men and women like that, and it's just so sad. There is something here that while you gain strength from your relationship, your energy for it, it's not as satisfying. It's like there's still something in you that drives, that commands and begs you to do more on your own terms and conditions in terms of self-fulfillment. And I have to agree. I completely agree with you. If you cannot be an individual that is happy and self-fulfilling, you're not going to be bringing that into the relationship and then you well and truly will have nothing to work with and you become one of those zombies that becomes so emotionally and overly attached to your person that you look to them constantly to have a life and nobody wants that. So I'm looking at a Gemini who has a surplus of energy and there's something that's been with you for a very long time and not all your energetic needs are being met through whatever this relationship is, it gives you strength. But it's kind of like, I want to pull some of my energy away from the relationship because I have a lot of it and I want to put more of it into my goals. They're here, they're with me, they're part of my life, they're part of my decision-making process. 
but there's more to me than that. And let me tell you this on a relatable scale in terms of women, okay? And uh, just again as an example, and being a parent, a lot of women to this day still identify only as a human being as once they're a mother, that's it, that's all they are. They're not a person, they're not a woman, they're not a human being with goals or aspirations. They're just simply like, I'm just a mom, that's all I am. No, actually you're a whole person. That's just one part of your identity. But they put all of themselves into that one concept and then they wonder why they feel empty. That's what I'm talking about. This is just another form of it. So we're not trying to put all of our energy and make it solely happy and responsible for us in a relationship. We're trying to put it outside of that too. Because you have goals and dreams and aspirations and for some reason the energy fulfillment isn't just coming from the relationship anymore. There's something bigger in you or your person that's trying to express itself. Okay. Um, but yes, we still find strength in the relationship, but you're not holding the relationship entirely responsible for your energetic output, nor should you. You make yourself miserable, you make them miserable, right? Okay, that's interesting. I have to say that's the most unique feature in your reading so far. So far it's been very overarching, very generalized, which again I don't care for, <laughs> but that happens. But so far that's actually the most unique feature. How very interesting. How very interesting. They're in here with you, making decisions, talking things out. Four Swords is on the exit. Mm. Mm -hmm. That quiet time's about to come to a screeching halt. <laughs> and it's looking like you had the energy to burn. You are excited about a potential new opportunity. You hope it pays out. Or your person hopes it pays out. Somebody here has that... Uh, of I got to do this. I'm not going to, I'm going to reduce my functions in other areas and I'm going to take on something else. I'm pretty sure this new balance is going to make me happy. Okay. Show me that four swords is on the exit, please. I didn't mean to go on and on. It's just, I'm really trying to unravel this concept. It's interesting. Seven of cups, seven of pentacles, the time of, the time of sitting on our ass is over as we've been discussing. We've been fantasizing, we've been contemplating different offers. I told you this had different twists on it, particularly monetary career stuff, life path goals, okay. Um, there is relationship mix in here too, but this is the focus. This time of daydreaming about new opportunities is finito. It's time to start living it. Okay, so it's been with us for a while. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Seven and seven energy. Uh, Cancerian energy. For some of you, yes. But in terms of that quiet contemplation, oh, I just wish I could cultivate another garden. I kind of wish I could cultivate another garden. Nothing's really happening. Nothing's really ringing my bell. No, there's really no options here. I'd like to find one of the new options, but I'm going to contemplate it for a long, long time. So you've been tossing around. You've been looking at offers. I, j I just know you've been looking at offers and you haven't been thrilled by any of them. None of them have really caught your fancy, but more to the point, I'm looking at a Gemini who, again, is tired of it. You're tired of the contemplation. You're tired of the fantasy. You're tired of playing the what if game. Uh, what if I had a new offer? What if I had a new offer? I don't know how long you were doing that, but it's looking like it's been for a while. Okay, seven months, 14 months. I don't know. It's kind of like, I have been thinking about a new offer. I've been thinking about a new offer. Not taking it too seriously. It's still under contemplation. Quiet contemplation. The time is over. Quiet contemplation of a new offer is over. You're going to be actively pursuing one rather soon. I do hope it pays out for you. I just know that you're tired of watching and waiting and nothing happening because, like I said, want is easy. It's easy. Nine of Wands, things about to get busy. Okay, some of this Nine of Wands in the near future. So long as you're happy and your energy is doing what it needs to do to figure out if this new star is path pathway is correct for you, that's all I care about. You're not going to know until you try. It's just the way it is. You can look at a star, but you're not going to know what it's about until you try to acquire it. That's it. It requires energetic effort. And realistic effort, not contemplation. It's time to do the damn thing, right? The Nine of Wands, please. You know, we can't look to our relationships solely for happiness. Especially if the gusto for that relationship is more like on a day-to-day -day 
basis now you know that kind of the the fire the freshness of it's off yes we love each other yes we're a support system but um, all my energy can't go towards this exclusively i get strength from it but it's not entirely all of who i am okay we have the moon the four of cups the empress mm. now that's interesting the frustration here <clears throat> Sorry. The moon four cups, the empress. This is terribly interesting. There's been dissatisfaction in you for a while. Restlessness in you. That's It's been dissatisfied for a while. It comes from the sense of constantly contemplating but not taking any action towards change. Your dreams, your goals, your hopes, your aspirations. A lot of that comes from way too much contemplation and not enough practice. That's going to change. Okay. You will start or begin to feel much more satisfied when you start actually trying to work towards your goals. Um, and it's going to help alleviate that boredom. That sense nothing is happening. That's that sense of nothing's coming towards me. I gotta do it myself. It's it's been with you for a while. Four cups is under the moon. You've been generally dissatisfied and disappointed with your environment and looking around and <sighs> part of it yes is the career thing you seem to think that that will make you happier once you start pursuing it I don't disagree but a part of you Gemini that disappointments also coming from the relationship and or love energy it's kinda like it's it's kinda weird I'm trying to find the words to articulate you don't quite know that some of the disappointment and lethargy and detachment you've been experiencing also comes from the kind of lack of emotionality or fire that you often experience in your relationship. I see the cooperation of someone here. I don't dispute that. You see structure and strength in the relationship and support. But the emotional energy isn't where you want it to be either. You seem to think it's a work issue or a career issue. It's displacement. So I want you to be careful with that. I know you seem to think your detachment comes from the career thing, where your person does. It's part of it is that I saw it back here. Here's the admission right here. I find strength in my relationship. I do. Saw it back here too. Okay. But sometimes I don't have, I don't feel the energy of it. The spike isn't there. I'm not happy. I'm not putting a lot of my energy into my relationship. It's there and I find comfort in it. But there's more to me than that. Yes, I agree. I don't disagree with that at all. What I am saying is part of this restlessness that's in you and that need to achieve higher goals also stems a little bit, and again, it's not meant in disrespect, but a part of it stems a little bit from the kind of emotional disappointment that you experience in your relationship and it's kind of like you're, you're trying to pull yourself out of it by finding a place to put your energy into that has nothing to do with the relationship, the commitment, whatever it is to you. Um, it's one of the things you struggle with in terms of understanding. Okay, Nine of Wands, the Four of Cups, the Moon, this isn't... it's not great. It's not great. I want you to go for your goals, honey. I want you to find your star, but I also would like it if you could get further into admitting to yourself one of the reasons why you're looking for new and you fantasize about new. It actually has nothing to do with your goals. It's it's because part of you is emotionally detached and disappointed about the lack of vital energy in your relationship. Now, why? I don't know. I don't know. I see where you take comfort in it. I see where you talk to this person through the problems in the day-to-day. -day. But it's lacking an emotional punch that's not there anymore. You don't seem to be terribly aware of it. You really think that if you change the circumstances or the job or the goal that you will feel better. And part of that's true. But there's a relationship element here that you're not quite seeing. You kind of resist it too with the Nine of Wands this magical thinking that if I change this area of my life the energy will catch up to my relationship. No, the energy in your relationship is kind of lacking. 
I don't know why. It's not my place to say you would know best. If I see a reason, I see a reason. Um, it's like, yeah, I don't know. Well, the energy, Christina, the passion for the relationship isn't great, and I probably shouldn't look to my relationship anyway to make me happy. Again, I agree. I agree. But there's one key element here you're missing about this person that means so much to you, your empress. This person you hold in high regard, who has our respect. One of the things you resist, though, the moon and the four cups, is that one of the reasons you're dissatisfied and restless is because the emotional quality is not where you want it in your relationship. The punch, the oomph, the sex, the love. Okay? Otherwise, you two are pretty strongly grounded, I believe. In terms of the practical day-to-day, -day, you two are situated in terms of comfort and strength. Okay? Let's keep going. I don't want to keep going in that. That was very another very specific element, and that kind of makes sense now to your relevant past. Okay, man, yours got deep, didn't it? Yours got deep. Yours got deep. There's a reason I had to clarify that Nine of Swords back here. Mm. I'm still excited for you. I'm still excited for your goals. I am. I am. I can see the change you're trying to generate. And it's not without merit, rhyme, or reason, okay? The changes you are trying to generate are positive. It's just you're not entirely aware of the motivation behind it, okay? The emotional energy that's lacking sometimes in the relationship, you're trying to compensate for it in other areas. You think it's career goals. So just please be aware of that, all right? But other than that, I want you to move forward into your goals. I want you to move forward into your son. I want you to move forward into your sense of self-pleasure. I do. The sun is under your strengths. Show me the sun, please. Show me the sun. Show me the sun. Show me the sun. Mm. I hate reporting stuff like that, honey. It's like, man, I had you on a track and I wanted you to stay there. But I have to be responsible. I have to call it like I seem. So again, take it resonates, say it does not. Verse energy says it applies. And yes, I am seeing a mixture of two people. Some of the sun, please, is under the strengths. Chariot, beautiful. Ten of Cups, strengths. Page of Pentacles, that's that. That's the idea. I see where sun is. I see where your sun is. I do. The idea is if uh, I can, if I can be happy, all the good feeling will come back into this. I'll feel better about me. I'll feel better about us. I know it. I know it. I know it. And it starts off with this page of pentacle. If I invest in the future, if I invest in the sun, everybody can be happy again and I'll have those strong feelings again. If I make us more happy, myself more happy, if I'm occupied and busy and doing what I want and pursuing a new star, everyone will thrive under the sun again. I'll be in love again. They'll be in love again. All will be well. And if I want that to be true for you, it's on a page. That's the, that's the direction you're taking, and that's what you're thinking. Again, this kind of glorious, this, this is what I hope for, these are my expectations. It's under your strengths, and that this is what you want to achieve. I just want you to be aware of the motivation behind it, okay? Why you're equating one thing to the other. If I pull in something more strongly, I can bring back the emotional punch the happiness, the fulfillment, the rainbow energy, being in love, okay? And if that's what you want, that's what I want for you. I just want you to be aware of why, what is an underlying motivation that you may not be consciously aware of. Not acknowledging the emotional disappointment. In fact, many of you actively block it. You think it's because you're not happy in your goals or something like that. Two of Cups. Yes, I've seen them here already. Yeah, the environment. Support system. As I've seen. You two have a cooperation of day-to-day -day spirit. You both kind of figure things out. You work things out as you go along. There's realistic conversation here about uh, things shifting and moving. Moderated. Changing a little bit. Not full cycles. Some of you will be partially reducing your energy so you can pursue this other thing, as I've said, and that's one of the things you're talking about actively with your person because there are legitimate concerns regarding stability and financial output. Got it. 
I have to recap because do you see how versatile your energy is here today? This is why I recap. Stata, why do you repeat yourself, honey? Do you not see what I see? Like, <laughs> I got to recap, okay? A woman's got to recap. You get this kind of reading, you've got to do it. <laughs> but if you've been around my channel and you're a subscriber, you know what's up, and this is one of the reasons why you subscribe, okay? Six of Wands, Six of Cups, beautiful. Beautiful, King of Cups, okay, beautiful, beautiful. Strong sense, strong sense of nostalgia, strong sense of love here with your support system, the Two of Cups, beautiful. Okay, hopefully you're headed in that direction, that's what I want you to achieve. Okay, that sense of level of accomplishment, the heart space being fuller, everybody seems to be happier, this is what we want. Oh, you also seem to have the support too. Community support, why is that coming in so hard? There's something here about community support. What is this? Beautiful. Lovely, lovely, lovely energy. One that you feel confident about. You're emotionally sustaining much more within yourself. What is this? What is this? Who is this? What is this? the hermit there's something in you that's growing I don't quite know where this is coming from I just say it was a support system and I see that you seem to be surrounded by good people who have very good intentions for you and with you it's looking very supportive but it's not just this person that's what's interesting to me it could just be family and friends but there's some sort of soul bond here could literally be Scorpio does not have to be um, Virgo as well. There's some sort of emotional support system here that goes beyond just this person's energy. They wish you well and they, they they have a lot of love and support when it comes to you. It could be multiple people. Your support system is lovely. You have someone else here, at least one other. Somebody here is cheering you on. And it makes you feel very good. It's almost like promotional recognition. Someone who promotes you, someone who cheers you on. It's outside of this person. They're included in it. The Two of Cups automatically tells me this person's included as your support system, as we've seen. That's not a contest. That It's not contested. You have reasonable hopes and expectations of getting your emotionality and being in love and feeling strong feelings again back on track. That's one of your bigger goals. Now, in your environment, However, extending beyond this Two of Cups, there is very strong emotional support energy that literally seems to be promoting you or cheering you on. I don't know what that means. It might be in reference to June or July of last year or this coming year. This coming year. It makes you feel very good. You're getting the recognition that you want from multiple people getting the recognition you want from multiple people including somebody who seems to be a primary driver of your promotion or um, emotional support but it boosts your visibility I don't know how else to say that there's someone here who has very strong emotional energy that, that supports you and boosts you that's outside of the two of cups this person is one of your support systems even if the emotional punch you're in a relationship is lagging or missing um, so sometime by next summer, June or July, there's someone here who promotes you. I don't know how else to say that. I keep getting promotion, 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 promotion. With the assistance of someone's energy whom you've known a very long time, they are promoting you or showing you off or showcasing your skills and it makes you feel very triumphant. It's like you are being seen. It could literally be a promotion from someone who cares about your work very much. Um, it is another support system and someone you've known a long time. This person could be part of your soul tribe. They could be part of your soul tribe. They want to show you off, promote you. I keep getting that. They promote you. They give. They boost your vis. That's what I'm trying to say. They boost your visibility. They boost your visibility. You might know who that person is. You may not. I don't know. But it, I, I'm seeing it as heavily future oriented, specifically next summer. I don't know why. 
but this is someone who strongly smacks of a support system. They boost the visibility of you. They believe in your work. They're... They believe in your work, they believe in you. And they boost your visibility. And it makes you proud as hell. Um, their support systems is off the charts. So I don't know who that person is to you or who they will be in future. I just know it's off the charts. Like this is someone who is very much part of your soul tribe. This is your soul bond. And in terms of soul bond as in you two share some sort of familiar soul connection with each other that's not incidental okay um they're meant to be a driving force behind your energy when it's imperative or it needs it sometime next summer june july specifically so just to let you know i i guess the whole point of that honey is not i clarified for that thing what the hell does that mean <laughs> you have to understand i see the core of the thing i see like a, a side thing and then there's additional subplot energy over here your energy your energy is just all over the fucking place i love it i don't get to exercise this much versatility which again your blessed energy does this i fucking love it gemini you give me so much mental practice it's not even funny gemini is over here over here over here over here over here try to keep up with that bitch no, i mean it's like that's what it's like working with your energy i swear to god every gemini i've ever met <laughs> Ah, ah, it's brilliant. I love it. Thank you for the mental exercise today. Okay. So yes, this person is part of your support system. We've already gone into it. I don't know who that is to you, but they make you feel fucking triumphant. They make you feel seen. And they, for some reason, all I know is that they boost your visibility substantially in future successfully. I don't know what that is to you. Uh, it's a matter of time, literally. Seven of Pentacles, the Hermit, and the Magician. You seem to know this or count on it in the future. You're manifesting this person's energy to be upfront and present for you and to support you and to, you know, just kind of showcase. Showcase. They showcase your work. You know it too, and it's a matter of time, or at least you want to. It's going to take a minute. The Hermit and the Seven of Pentacles, you're, rel you're relying on this person to showcase you. They have big, big energy attached to them. Um, they might, they might, honey, you know, I don't know who this is, but they have a strong heart when it comes to you. And they do what they do, and they mean what they mean. And they feel what they feel. Okay. So this is part of your soul tribe. Oh, remember to give that energy back to him, honey. Because let me tell you something right now. I don't know who that is. But in a way, you kind of expect their energy to be present for you in future. You're kind of hoping or banking on it. Like they'll come through for you. It's looking like they will. They're part of your support team. So when the time is right, make sure you give that energy back to them. Because they... They're promoting you. That's all I got. They showcase you. They're part of your support system. And you kind of see that as it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And it, they're going to boost your support. I'm sorry. I don't mean to go on and on. It was just absolutely fascinating. You have so much fascinating energy in here today. So whatever that is for you, something that you anticipate for upcoming summer, no later than next Virgo season, but it's looking like June, July. Uh, you are anticipating this energy, person's energy, to showcase you, and it's done so in love. Uh, they care about you, they care about your work, and it's triumphant. You seem to be really banking on that person's energy to show up for you in future. I believe they will, so make sure you show them that same level of energy, yeah? But uh, it's outside of this Two of Cups. It is outside of this Two of Cups. Very strong support system. Very strong. I don't know. That's part of the thing that you are working towards. You might be relying heavily on this person's energy, or you expect them to with a June and July, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, that was so specific. But they are, in fact, one of your support systems, and as far as I could tell, part of your soul tribe. Okay. okay, Wheel of Fortune, your hopes and your fears. Yes, you want change, but you want the best kind of change. It's like, if I'm going to do all this... I damn well better have something to show for it. Show me that Wheel of Fortune. 
Let's see. Let's see if your hopes and your star pathway and your desires are right for you. I'm hoping so. Your outcome is justice. The justification of the thing. The Ace of Cups. Ten of Swords. Mm. The Nine of Cups. It's conflicting. It will give you pleasure. A sense of fulfillment. I don't see you investing fully your heart space into some of the aspects. I don't. But it does seem to fulfill you in some sense of purpose and drive, okay, and a new sense of feeling. That kind of thing that we were missing back here, that, that punch that we were feeling or not feeling in our relationship. You do have a much stronger sense of satisfaction tied to this direction. You do. But uh, there's something here in the Ace of Cups you're not fully emotionally invested in it. I don't know why. Part of you is holding back from fully emotionally investing in it, whatever this is. I don't know. I do know that you are feeling more pleased than you were before. So you may not be fully emotionally investing in this. Um, I have to warn you, in the respect like I saw in Scorpio's last reading, the Ten of Swords, the Ace of Cups, a part of you may no longer emotionally invest in what I'm saying here, because that was already under question. And yet the pleasure remains. Nine of Cups. You still feel fulfilled personally. Nine of Cups is personal. Nine and nine and nine and nine is always personal. It's individual. You do have a stronger sense of personal fulfillment. However, there is a part of your heart that is not accessible to something. And given the state of this relationship, I don't know. It's kind of like I find a stronger sense of feeling in me. But maybe now we're coming more to terms with the fact that one of the reasons I was dissatisfied to begin with is because of the lack of strong feeling in my relationship. And that might be more of a reflection of what that is. Understanding that the reason that you were trying to generate so much change was that you could feel better about yourself. Okay. And not so much your relationship. You understand? Real terror of life. So in many respects, I'm looking at a Gemini, you are well supported, except in the area that is most personal to you. It's one of the reasons why you're generating change, but through that process of generating change, you will find yourself, and I do believe the truth, I do, um, and key components seem to be taking place over next summer as well. I don't know who that is to you, but they pack a hell of a bunch, and they do so in your name. So. I don't know what the energy is, <laughs> but they are waving a banner <laughs> in your name <laughs> under your support system as your soul tribe. They're like, <laughs> they wave a banner that says, hey, this Gemini, check this Gemini out. Like this person supplies a lot of energy in your name. They are on board with what you do. It's almost like this... I'm sorry, I don't want to take it to that place. I'm sorry. I don't know why it has... I don't want to take it to that place. I don't know why I'm about to say that. Yeah, I do. It's almost like this... Whoever that is to you, especially if you see them in that... It's almost like they supply the emotional punch that you don't get over here. And maybe that's why they're part of your soul tribe. They help move you forward in the way that maybe this person doesn't or can't remember how to. They do believe in you and they boost you incredibly. That person ain't fucking around, man. So, you do have... I'm sorry, I don't know why I keep going on that tangent. I didn't mean to, honey. It's, it's not about whoever the fuck that is. I just find it intriguing. I find it intriguing. I, I don't know if this person is your boss. It doesn't quite feel like that. But this is someone who believes in you. And they come packing in with heavy hitting emotions like, Oh no, I mean what I feel and I feel what I mean, baby. It's... And I believe in that Gemini and they're just plastering you with a big old banner. It's like, check this out. And you seem to be relying on it 
by next summer. I, that's so fucking specific. Excuse my language. Oh, you're used to it. Justice is outcome. Justification. I don't know, but I gotta try. Yes, I understand. Justice has the outcome, please. Justice has the outcome, please. Justice has the outcome, please. This one was absolutely fascinating. Justice has the outcome, please. I, mean, I should have done stretching before I sat down today because I got mental aerobics with you today. All right. Justice has the outcome. The Wheel of Fortune. Things are changing. Nine of Swords, Stress, Ten of Wands. Come on, baby. Come on. What's wrong? What's wrong with the output? You said you were more personally satisfied. What's the strain? Where's the strain coming from? Where's the strain coming from? You take off more? You, did you bite more than you could chew? Mm. I don't want you to stop believing in yourself, honey, but there's something here about your energies under strain. You're trying to balance. You're trying to balance the situation. Show me the source of the strain, please. Damn it. I don't want you to lose your enthusiasm, honey. I don't want you to lose your enthusiasm. I don't. Yes, part of the reasons why you're trying to generate a new cycle is because you're missing some of the emotionality that's core to the principle of a relationship I'm seeing here. But that should not deter you from a pre uh, approaching life goals. What is it? The Page of Swords, the Ace of Swords, the Truth, the Seven of Wands. We need to have a critical look about why your energy is not moving forward in the positive direction that you had hoped to change or achieve. You are showing me some aptitude for success, but your energy is being pulled back in several different directions that are negative. You either took on more than you could chew or you failed to understand the reality of the thing. There is something here that suggests your energy is not harmonized. And if it's coming from your relationship, sure, I can see that. You already showed me the Ten of Swords to the Ace of Cups. Well, part of you becomes more richly satisfied, Nine of Cups, as an individual. The hopes you had for this outcome isn't being generated. Your energy is way too splintered. There's a truth here that we are still blocking. We're not looking at it. So while your strengths are beautiful and admirable, they're not coming through. Your hopes and expectations to put more of the emotionality back into a relationship, while they are honorable and beautiful, they're not happening. And that's because there's still a truth you're not looking at. Perhaps it doesn't matter how many times you change your job or your career field. If you are still dissatisfied with your relationship, then that's the real issue. Doesn't matter how many times you change up cars or you change up locations or move or change jobs. The fact of the matter is you might be playing pin the tail on the donkey, refusing to look at the donkey. Because if, if your goal's here, I want you to fucking get it, Gemini. I do. But I don't want you to distract yourself for the sake of it. I know that you have principles of success attached to you, but your inner world is still frustrated and disappointed that you're not finding the balance that you're looking for. And that's because part of you remains blind to the real issue, the real truth. I got a page and a seven of wands navigating this ace of swords. That's your ultimate truth right there. And you ain't trying to look at it. So I see the busyness and fussiness in you trying to generate positive change and part of you is generating positive change but you're not understanding the motivation behind it. One of the reasons why you're keeping yourself so fucking busy is because you don't want to look at the real issue. And I tell you, it doesn't matter how many different cars you buy, how many houses you move around in, the cities, the locations, and the job. The, fun the fundamental is, the thing is, is that you're dragging a truth in you that you won't recognize, and it's one of the reasons that you remain detached and fragmented. You know, I, I just, I hate seeing that Ten of Swords and the Ace of Cups for you. Are you personally satisfied about the direction you're taking? Yes. Are you as just as strained in your personal life? Yes. It's kind of like, well, damn, I switched up jobs and everything. I started following this pathway. I started feeling better about myself. I had reasonable hopes, dreams, and expectations of making my relationship feel more like it's on top of the world again. Why isn't it happening? Because of that right here. This was the bridge, the gateway between here and your future success orientation. This is what's not being addressed. 
instead of assigning the unhappiness and the boredom and the lethargy to your career or your goal, perhaps look at the actual relationship. Because while the support is there, the emotional energy isn't. And that's one of the things that disappoints you, but it's under your moon. And Nine of Wands, you don't want to acknowledge it about that person who's supposed to be significant in your life. It's not an accusation, it's just, that's the issue. Fucking frustrated, man. I'm well over an hour at this point. There's no way I'm starting over, so I gotta keep it, honey. I hate that. I hate it. Justice is here because you have the potential to balance. As your outcome. I know what your goals are in your relationship. It's like if I just change this one thing, my emotional world will fall into place with this person and I'll be happy with them again. Maybe it's me. Maybe maybe you're taking on too much responsibility. Did that occur to you? Like, the reason I'm bored and restless, it's my own fault. So maybe if I change shade up again, put some excitement in there, give myself something new to work towards, it'll reflect in my relationship. That's not how it works. You're applying life goals and career goals to your relationship goals. I don't know that they're a bad person, necessarily. I don't know that I get that at all. It's more like you don't want to address your disappointment in your love energy. It's something that you refuse to address. Otherwise, you have the potential to balance your life. Because you tell me when you break off and do your own thing, you're actually quite happy. But when we pull back to your work-life balance, fuck no. It's still very much off the scale. So what are you going to do? Change jobs again? Move around again? Trying to generate some kind of activity? You know, it's kind of like that energy. I'm going to pick, just pack and pick up and just take off and I'll be a brand new person. No, you still take you with you. It's like that but an amplified version. Dude, I started out with such intensity on your reading, I was like, bye, I'll see you in a couple weeks. Hopefully you stuck around. <laughs> Damn, Gina. Yours was complicated. I enjoyed it in many respects because of the mental intensity that you were showing me. But honey, there's some shit that's secret to you. You're assigning the disappointment to the wrong areas in your life. And keeping yourself busy isn't going to generate any more emotionality into your relationship. You're grateful they're there. You see them as a part of your strength, but the feeling's not in it, right? But you're glad that they're there, right? And that's the thing you need to talk about, because that's the real issue, and that's the only thing that keeps you from being balanced. Damn it. Frustrated. Oh, I'm so frustrated. Dude, you presented to me a hard surface, man. Sis. Bro. But when we dig, we started digging, Gemini. I saw some serious shit in here. You have the potential to get that balance. You do. Yes, the way that explained that Seven of Swords, you had a sneaking suspicion from the very beginning about the balance. Can I balance it? Can I get that work-life balance if I do this other thing? Maybe it'll help balance out this other thing. That's not how life works. Sometimes it can help, and it can give us more insight, but it's never the solution to the problem. The solution to the problem is to see the damn donkey before you try to pin a tail on it. Okay, let's do... Uh, I want to see most of all this Nine of Wands when your energy really starts to exert itself, get tired, you're coming out of a place of rest. You'll be coming quite busy quite soon. Still kind of not really acknowledging within you where that sense of boredom and emotional lethargy is coming from. It's not by making yourself busier, honey. It's, it's not about making yourself busier. Because then you're just going to find something else to keep you busy, thus keep you distracted, thus you don't actually have to look at the real issue. So if you're going to make major life changes, to quite, for some of you started doing this uh, last Leo season, that's when some of you really started to look for other opportunities in the 19th. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, no? Yeah, the 19th for some of you. That's when you might have started getting busy trying to acquire a new Six of Pentacles. 
Eight of Pentacles. There's cooperation and balance, but it's not exactly loving and warm, temperance, Sagittarius. It doesn't have to be. Um, I'm kind of feeling that, though. The sense of balance and cooperation is, is never, it never changes. It's comforting in its own way. Because it's repetitious, it's predictable. But it's not exactly loving. Next Sagittarius season might be important. Some of you, though, I insist you actively started expecting um, different results sometime last summer. Some of you might have had an interview or something like that around the 19th. I don't quite know. Inquiries. When does Gemini's energy get busier? King of Swords. A couple weeks to two months. Two weeks to two months, it's consistent. Two weeks to two months, that's when your energy is going to start to really get exhausted upwards to Sagittarius season when you take on this new busyness that for some reason personally satisfies you but does not satisfy the relationship needs at all. I know what you hoped for, I know what you expected, and they were reasonable in, in the respect that you want the best, but you're not harmonizing with the best. The life work balance isn't here, and that's because the life portion and the emotions we experience with our person, our partner, that's the real thing that we need to be more aware of, not how busy we can distract ourselves. Damn, dude. Your energy's gonna start to spike over the next couple of months. It's going to become very busy very soon. Some of you hope and or long for a kind of connection that's on a more deeper, intimate level. But it doesn't happen. There's a day-to-day -day responsibility balance that supersedes everything. Okay, I already saw that summer reference for that support system. Gemini, I'm going to check up on you in a couple of weeks and see how we're doing. This was very interesting. It started out vague, and then it got real specific real quick. Like I said, this was a very excellent exercise in mental practices. Um, damn. You took me down a couple of highways today. There was a much deeper thing at play. At first I kind of thought the surface of that relationship. You two cooperate. You check in with each other. There's conversations back and forth about realities, integration of new concepts, reduction of roles and increase of other roles. All practical stuff. They're part of your support system, technically, as the Two of Cups. Relationship energy. It's not the most emotionally engaging or fulfilling or passionate, but you two are used to each other. However, it's that same energy that you are disappointed by and will not confront. And it's one of the reasons why you're looking around in the future. How come this isn't balancing out? How come I actually feel more personally satisfied and my relationship feels even worse. Ten of Swords, Ace of Cups. It's, it's kind of like I have all these goals and ambitions and I don't have the support I want on the emotional level. And I'm disappointed by it and I don't know why. I don't want to look at it either. Your hopes are beautiful and it kills my heart in terms of the strengths. I know what it is you would like to achieve in your relationship but how it's turning out in reality are two different things. And you seem to think it's a matter of job change or location change. I see a lot of traveling for you. It was back and forth. Talk about highways, honey. It was all over the road. Um, the strongest emotional energy I saw by far was a support system outside of that that really seems to promote you and or encourage you. Um, they really seem to kind of put your energy forward and showcase it in future. In fact, you're banking on it. Some of you are relying on them to do that. I don't know why, but it has something to do with your work. But, um, I don't know. I don't know. It's frustrated. 
Damn it, we had such a strong starting out reading. Woohoo, Gemini, I don't care what I say from this point forward. But there was something much deeper at play here. I was supposed to seal that. And the Gemini was looking at what you saw, you were supposed to see it too. It's the thing you don't want to see. That's the reason why, well, if I do this, or if I do that, or if I keep myself busy, or if I move properties, or if I just move around, or if I just get a new job, things will fall into place. W, Z, uh, the seahorse, indication of Piscean energy, lightning bolt, yeah, 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 tower energy, yeah, it's going to get really loud and busy real quick. Scorpio energy as well. What else, please? More of that Libra energy, which I saw pretty heavily. Again, you could be connecting to Libra, absolutely. U, E, crab, sign of cancer, snowflake, uh, time of winter, also Scorpio energy, the infinity loop. Really kind of desiring our eternal energy, the forever energy, the infinity, this kind of soul language that's eternal. Something that you can feel forever and doesn't feel so absent and make you guess where it is or wonder why you're so discontent and you think it's everything but that thing. We want the opposite of that. Dragonfly, hard wearing chains, real chains. Dragonfly is very hard wearing, very versatile. Again, more Scorpio energy. A lot of water here today and Libra. Look for a dragonfly, by the way. There's one coming. And it will be a confirmation. Goldfish, sign of Pisces. Uh, L, G, C, S. Confirmation for some of you. A dragonfly. You'll be seeing that soon. And it will be confirmation for you. I don't typically see the crab as in its physical form, but yes, you could very well be seeing a crab in terms of something that you see, possibly on the screen, like a video. Seeing a crab on the beach, something like that. But the dragonfly, I believe, you'll be seeing with your own eyes. Confirmation to both goldfish, koi, koi pond. The koi swimming round and round in a bowl. You know the thing about uh, goldfish is that they have virtually no short-term memory, I believe, is what I read. So take this with a grain of salt. You have to check me. The thing about the goldfish and the reason why it can do this. Round and round in the bowl, because it has no short-term memory. It just keeps doing the same thing. Just keeps doing the same thing, doesn't know it's dissatisfied. How oh, easily we forget and we just get used to this. Like we haven't done this a million times. It's like you keep yourself busy, then you forget your motivation and reason why you were doing it in the first damn place. And then you move on to the next thing that will keep you busy and distracted for some of you. Sorry. Oh, I got that. <sighs> Gemini. Look at you in a couple weeks and see how we do. Very curious. It started out one way. And just like your expectations for the Gemini I was looking at turned out to be something else altogether. That wasn't the very map of your reading. I don't know what was. I see yourself jazzed up. I wish you knew or better understood the motivation behind it. There's a reason I saw your relevant past, your upcoming future, your hopes versus your output. Your reading was a true reflection of that process. I see that now. That's if you resonate. If you don't, don't take it. Take care of the placements or I'll catch you on the next one. Put in the comments as you see fit. Take care.
Be well.